the Quality Enhancement Plan, or QEP, you may have heard that buzzword around campus, but exactly what does it mean for our students and for the community? We'll tell you coming up. This edition of GC Conversations, where our guest today is Dr. Stephen Jones Hi. with the Center for Engaged Learning, Teaching, and Scholarship. Right. Welcome. You got it all. <laughs> we got it. Got it all in there. Uh, so, Dr. Jones, tell us a little bit about you. You're actually a new face here to campus, mm -hmm. right? Relatively new. Yeah. yeah. About a little over a year. About now. a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk to us a little bit about um, kind of what brought you to Georgia College and what you do here on campus. Okay. Well, um, I started my career. Oh, I won't say when, but I started my <laughs> career uh, as a college professor and uh, did a lot of work around community outreach and community engagement. And okay. since then, I've done a lot of work in, in that area. And uh, when I saw the, uh, the position announcement for what was then director of the Center for Engaged Learning, I thought, well, that's pretty interesting because that combines a lot of the things that I've been doing, so service learning, uh, student Leadership Programs, American Democracy Project, those are all things that I've worked with and on at other campuses. So uh, it seemed like a good fit for me. Uh, so, I, so I came here last year. Uh, over the summer, uh, the provost uh, officially kind of created the Center for Engaged Learning, Learning Teaching, and Scholarships. I have a hard time getting that <laughs> myself. Uh, which combines the Center for Engaged Learning and the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. So the Center for Engaged Learning programs have been combined with a lot of the faculty development programs. And so that's what the center is now. Uh, and so, um, so that's my position now, and that's what I've been working on since I've been here. So a familiar face to both students and faculty here on campus as far as further outreach as it mm -hmm. goes, um, kind of what you, you delve in here on campus. Uh, one particular area um, that is of interest and of high interest campus-wide that you're involved in is QEP mm -hmm. uh, on college campuses, a lot of acronyms. Right. Can you explain to us QEP, yeah, what that Q actually is? QEP stands for Quality Enhancement Plan. And that's part of the process that all of the colleges in the southern region of the U.S. have to go through because we're accredited by uh, an organization called the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. And so every college that's going to be accredited by that organization has to present what they refer to as a quality enhancement plan. And a quality enhancement plan is simply a five-year project that focuses on a particular aspect of student learning that we as an institution want to build on and improve. And, and so that's essentially what a quality enhancement plan is. And we are developing ours to present to uh, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools uh, by February. And then they will come for a site visit in March to kind of talk to folks and see how we're doing and see how we're actually going to implement what we put on paper. Right, and this has been in the developmental stages for some time mm -hmm. now, um, but we're actually um, kind of getting down to the nitty gritty, as you say, um, early next semester is when this kind of goes into full swing. Right, right. Um, talk to us a little bit about um, the process. Uh, how did we determine what our area or our plan would consist of? Right. Well, actually, this process has been in place for a while, actually, before I started here. Uh, the process began uh, when uh, the institution was preparing for the search for uh, President Dorman's position. And uh, at that time, uh, the, um, the, you know, the group that was working on this was called the Quality Enhancement Envisioning Task Force. And that group came up with uh, some broad categories of areas for uh, kind of a, a quality enhancement and vision for the institution. Uh, last fall, um, that group kind of narrowed its, uh, its broad categories down to about five or six categories. We had a series of meetings on campus uh, to look at those different categories or themes, is what we're calling them. Uh, and out of that emerged the theme of building a culture of engaged learning. And that was announced by the president in his State of the University address last, um, last spring. Uh, since then, we've kind of been working with, from that theme and then kind of identifying, well, what, what does building a culture of engaged learning mean? What will we actually do to bring that about? 
what kind of student learning experiences will be integrated in that theme, and that's kind of where we are now. We've, we've got the theme, uh, we have some broad goals related to that theme, and we're further refining those goals into specific learning outcomes that students will demonstrate. You brought up a very interesting aspect that you guys do have a framework set out, mm -hmm. um, specific goals that it entails. Uh, wh why are those goals important and why did you guys pinpoint those as something that we should focus on? Right. Well, the goals, and I'll, I'll just read them to you, um, the, the, the goals are essentially uh, through engaged learning in and beyond the classroom, Georgia College students will develop knowledge, skills, and dispositions to become informed citizen leaders and to serve the public good locally and globally. And the reason we, we kind of focused on those goals is, is that they're, they're essentially uh, integral to our mission. Uh, if you read our mission statement, you read our value statements, uh, those goals appear in multiple places. Right. And so we wanted to, and that's one of the things that the accrediting body wants to see is, is your quality enhancement plan linked to your mission and strategic um, directions and strategic planning. And, and so these are very specifically linked to our mission, our values, and our strategic priorities as an institution. Uh, and so we, we thought, well, we, I mean, they, obviously they reflect the notion of engaged learning. Uh, but it further refines engaged learning to those types of experiences in and out of the classroom that will help students become uh, informed citizen leaders, that's the phrase, and to serve the public good. Uh, so now we have to say, well, how will we know students are becoming informed citizen leaders and serving the public good? And that's where we are now. We're kind of further refining those goals to very demonstrable uh, types of outcomes and experiences that students will have. Okay, and one other is, did we cover both of our goals that were there, that yeah, breakdown? Okay. Develop, yeah, develop knowledge, skills, and dispositions, become informed citizen leaders, and serve the public good locally and globally. Okay, very good, and something very important for us to focus on. Now, this task force, this group of people that have been brought together are... Um, not just representatives from here on campus, we have actually, to reach those goals, mm -hmm. reached out into the community, correct? Exactly, yeah. And we've done that in several ways. Uh, one, we, we have a task force member, uh, Janet Cabin, who, who is uh, uh, the director of a, of a very important uh, community organization locally. Uh, but we've also done a lot of uh, forums in the community where we have uh, just reached out to the community, uh, tried to get input from the community. We've done that in terms of um, the diversity action planning task force. Uh, actually, as part of this earlier visioning process that I mentioned, uh, we had a, uh, a community forum at Digital Bridges. And again, what would you like to see from the university? What types of initiatives would you like to see emerging from the university? And so uh, we've tried to be very uh, conscientious about seeking community input as well as the input uh, of members of the campus community. Right, and that community is a key aspect of that. And Dr. Jones, we're going to delve a little mm -hmm. further into QEP and what that actually means for the community in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll be right back with more on this edition of GC Conversations. Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh, yeah. All right. All good. Take care. Way to go. Nice. Bring it on. Gotcha. I'm here for you. Oh, no. Please, 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 I'm waiting. Interesting, not buying it, not fair. That's it, this conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs, learn fast. F, face drooping, A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Adopting a new pet is a rewarding experience. And shelter pets make super pets. Your new best friend will steal your heart bring you happiness and enrich your life for years to come. You can make a difference in the life of an animal. Adopt and bring home a shelter pet today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. 
We're back on this edition of GC Conversations with our guest, Dr. Stephen Jones from the Center for Engaged Learning, Teaching, and Scholarship. Mm -hmm. And our focus today is on QEP. Now, we've talked kind of um, upper level things, the big idea of the plan and um, how we're looking to bring our students to a more engaged learning level, which mm -hmm. is kind of the overall goal. Uh, but one of the key aspects of this is to increase that engaged learning aspect. We're partnering with the community. Exactly. Uh, that's something that's very important. So why, why was that one of the targets that we sought to enhance this engaged learning aspect? All right. Well, again, as I mentioned earlier, it, it's key to our mission as, as an institution. Um, we, we value our place and responsibility in the local community. And uh, as you look at those goals uh, that I mentioned, this, you know, developing informed citizen leaders, serving the public good, uh, it's kind of difficult to do that in isolation. I mean, you have to work uh, in and with community members to, to actually achieve those goals of, of helping stu students develop those skills as, as future leaders and public servants. And so we framed this notion of engaged learning around an, an even more specific idea, which is community-based engaged learning. And uh, what we uh, envision is that um, students will build on a lot of the community-based experiences they're having already. It's not as if we're starting from zero, right? Uh, uh, I think a lot of folks understand that uh, Georgia College students and faculty are engaged with the community in multiple ways, uh, tutoring in the schools, mentoring, um, providing services, uh, volunteer services through the gift center, uh, doing what we call service learning, which is um, student service as part of a course. Uh, a lot of our students are engaged in field research uh, that benefits local community organizations. So this is part of what we do uh, as a matter of course already, what we're wanting to do with the Quality Enhancement Plan is to intensify those efforts. Uh, so as I said, we're not starting from not doing anything. Right, we're, we're, right. we're doing a lot already, but we really want to intensify those activities that we're doing in the community. And one of the keys that you mentioned earlier was that we really want to measure or look at the quality of education for our students based right. on this engaged learning right. aspect. Uh, how will that be assessed or mm -hmm. looked at? How will, how will we determine whether or not we're successful in those efforts? Well, that's a good question because we're working on that right now. But um, I, I think how, how it's probably going to shape out is um, when students are having these types of experiences, what we want them to be able to demonstrate is that they can make connections between what they're learning in the classroom and what they're doing outside of the classroom so that the, the course material uh, is viewed as the students as something more than just you know, facts that they memorize, but material that actually makes sense when it's applied in a community setting. Uh, and they can tell us how they've uh, been able to do that. They can tell us uh, how being able to, to work with members of the community on particular projects uh, it helps them view themselves as responsible citizens. Uh, so we really want them to be intentional about thinking, well, what are my responsibilities as, as not only a student in Georgia College, but as a member of a community? How can I use what I learn uh, at Georgia College to better serve my community, whether it's Baldwin County, Milledgeville, or their home communities, or they may define community in terms of uh, the global community. We have a lot of students who go overseas, go to foreign countries, and want to engage in service outside of the United States. And we want them to be able to think about, well, what does it mean to be a global citizen and, and use my knowledge and skills to serve, as we said in our goals, to serve the public good locally and globally. So we want them to be able to critically kind of reflect on that to, to, and, and put that into words, whether it's through oral presentations, whether it's through written presentations, and we'll, provide, we're in, again, we're in the process of developing this, but we'll kind of provide guidelines to students. So we, in higher ed, we call those rubrics, right? But we, essentially, it's guidelines to students to say, well, as you're reflecting on this, here are some things you want to kind of keep in mind. And we will assess students on the basis of, are they kind of meeting the criteria that we set for them? So multifaceted here in that um, we're not only talking about as part of 
coursework enhancing this, but there are other opportunities, as you mentioned, that we are already involved in, for instance, through the Give Center mm -hmm. or other student organizations right. that can be involved. So this is almost a multi-level, multifaceted uh, approach that s students can learn in many different aspects, that no. it's not necessarily in terms of the classroom anymore. No. And that's an important point because that's part of you know, we, we use this phrase, in and beyond the classroom, learning in and beyond the classroom. And uh, a lot of times, it's, I think, part of this uh, asking students to reflect on their experiences is an important component because we, we know that when students volunteer, we know that when through their student organizations, whether they're going out into the community, whether it's fundraising, whether it's volunteering on particular projects, uh, we know that students develop in particular ways. But we haven't always captured that very well. And that's one of the things we want to do with the Quality Enhancement Plan, is to, is to somehow capture and, and have students verbalize, well, what are you learning? What are you learning about yourself? Or are you seeing how what you do in the classroom actually informs what you're doing as part of a member of a student organization? And we want them to be able to articulate that for us. And, and that's part of what we're trying to do with the Quality and Enhancement Plan as well. Which I can imagine will actually allow us to tailor the educational process for our specific students, depending on that feedback, right. to find this is working, or this aspect, this department, this area does a really good job of relating classroom to real world, should we say, experience, yeah. and others, how can we make you relate better? Right, and that's a great point too, because part of what we want to do with the Quality Enhancement Plan, and one of the reasons assessment is so important, is that when we, when we learn from students what they're learning, then as you said, then we can take that information and put it back into the design of the learning experiences. And so uh, when students tell us, wow, it would have been great if I had been able to do this, or it would have been great if I had known this ahead of time. Right? We always have those, gee, I wish I knew now what I didn't know, you know, or I wish I knew then what I know now, right? Well, when students reflect, they can tell us that, and then we can take that information and use that to improve the quality of their experiences. Very good. And a lot of different ideas, and this is a work in progress, mm -hmm. shall we say. I mean, this is, none of this is uh, totally in stone, we have a five-year plan right. to work on this. So as we're working out the details, we actually do have several pilot programs that are in place. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back in just a second and we'll talk a little bit more about those pilot programs and also some of the partnerships that we're working on, um, some ideas for working with the community. All right. All right, we'll be back in just a minute with more on this edition of GC Conversations. Clean kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Lisa, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV. and. I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <sighs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. <laughs> So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. We're back on this edition of GC Conversations with our guest, Dr. Stephen Jones, who we're talking with um, about the Quality Enhancement Plan, a five-year plan for Georgia College. And we've kind of talked about the goals that we've set, um, the timeline, the progression uh, that we're looking at. But actually at this point in the 
planning process of the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we have several pilot programs that are in place, one going on this semester mm -hmm. particularly, right? right. Yes, uh, Dr. Karen Berman, who's the, the chair of the theater and dance department, uh, is working with early college, high school, and uh, she's working with theater students and nursing students uh, to help adolescents um, better understand certain issues that confront most adolescents. Bullying, um, substance abuse, domestic violence, these types of issues that have both emotional and physical health consequences. And so what uh, that course does is the theater students actually develop um, kind of impromptu sketches and skits uh, to teach uh, these health concepts um, to the early college students. And then those students are invited to come up and, and essentially adapt those sketches. So for example, I might uh, develop a sketch and, and I might um, you know, represent uh, bullying in a particular way. And then students from the, from the high school may say, well, you know, that's not how it really works. And so they'll be invited up and say, well, show us how it really works. And so they're able through theater to kind of enact uh, the impact of these issues on their own personal lives. Then the nursing students uh, will develop material for them to, to help them better cope and develop coping and adaptation skills. So what this does is kind of brings into play a lot of the types of things we're looking for in the quality enhancement plan. We're working with a community organization, in this case early college. Uh, we're allowing students, our students, to integrate kind of what they're learning in the classroom and apply it outside of the classroom through, through the theater and nursing presentations. Uh, the students are reflecting on these experiences and they're, they're basically telling um, the professor, uh, well, this is what I'm learning and this is how I see these course concepts coming into play outside of the classroom. Uh, and they're, they're developing, and this is kind of one of the ultimate and kind of objectives, they're developing concrete um, um, products, as it were. Right? Not products like merchandising, but products in terms of something that is actually going to be put in place to serve the community. In this case, it's theater performances uh, and um, information that helps young people better cope with the stresses of their lives through uh, the nursing students. Uh, and so that's kind of our ultimate goal. Is there something that we can leave behind, right, that our students can leave behind that serves the community in some important way? Uh, and so th this course actually accomplishes most of the outcomes that we, um, we want to see in the Quality Enhancement Plan. A great, a very tangible kind of uh, explanation or example for us to look mm -hmm. at um, of really the goal and what QEP stands for and what we're looking for. Um, there's also going to be a pilot program next semester mm -hmm. with a different class, kind of taking a different side of QEP. Can right. you tell us about that? Yeah, and this is a great class. This is a class that has uh, been ongoing uh, for a while. It's taught by two professors, one a sociology professor, uh, Professor Sandra Godwin, and another an art professor, uh, Professor Valerie Aranda. And the course is called Art and Social Change. It brings together you know, sociology students, art students, uh, but the goal of the course is to help students see that art, visual art, can actually serve as an agent to facilitate social change. And so the students in the course will learn both you know, sociological perspectives on, on contemporary social issues and how to bring about positive social change in a community. Uh, and the art students will learn that, and, but, but the art students kind of know art. They may not know the social theory. The social theory students, well, they're learning the social theory, they may not know art. But bringing these perspectives together, uh, the students will uh, create as a project a mural that will uh, hopefully uh, represent or tell the story uh, of the Harrisburg community. So they'll be working with the Collins P. Lee Community Center in the Harrisburg neighborhood uh, and getting input from the community residents. And so again, the idea is not just us going out and saying, well, we're going to do this for you, but it's about getting the community involved, involving our faculty and students with community members 
uh, and to provide um, a, 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 again, a product um, that tells the community story, that gives the community a, a sense of pride uh, or enables it to exhibit its sense of pride in itself. There's, you know, a lot of great things have been going on in the Harrisburg community and through the Collins P. Lee Center. And uh, this is a, a way of allowing them to tell their story, to, to uh, exhibit that, yes, we, you know, we have an important story to tell. And they'll be able to tell that through the mural project that will come out of this course. Another great tangible example of QEP and its uh, form of how it can actually relate to the community and also the educational process. Now, again, those two are pilot programs. Mm -hmm. QEP will take full effect next fall, beginning next fall, correct? Mm -hmm. um, some of these, I know that you guys have gone through a process of looking at ideas and looking at courses that can be formulated to fit into the model of the two examples that you just gave. Um, how will you guys go about making the determination of how we can form those partnerships and, and working through that process? All right. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we have a pretty strong base already of, of uh, faculty have worked in the community. We have pretty strong network of community partners. And I think uh, uh, initially a lot of what's going to happen is we're, uh, we're going to pair experienced, you know, experienced faculty, community organizations that already have a strong relationship with us uh, and, and kind of you know, almost serve a matchmaking role. So those faculty and community organizations that have already established strong uh, partnerships uh, will continue to be involved in the quality enhancement plan. But as other faculty and academic programs and student organizations, et cetera, as they see an opportunity to become more involved, uh, then we envision the, the quality enhancement plan as providing a vehicle where you know, the you know, novices, as it were, uh, will know who they could contact in the community. And uh, we can build on those relationships. So for example, we have plenty of things happening with Baldwin County Schools. You know, we have the YES program, we have High Achievers program, we have Communities in Schools is based here on our campus. So we're doing a lot of great work in, the, in the, our schools already. Uh, but there may be courses that have not necessarily thought about, well, maybe I could partner with local schools. Right? Well, this gives them an opportunity then to think about, well, how would I partner with local schools? Uh, would I partner through tutoring? Would I partner through maybe integrating a mentoring program as part of my course? And that's what we want to be able to do is to kind of create those, um, those pairings. Uh, community organizations, likewise, who may not have thought of the university as a partner, we want to invite them into the process as well. So if community organization, you know, as they become more aware of what we're trying to do in the community, well, then we want to provide them with access so we want to be able to say, well, you have an idea, a project, maybe we can find a, a student organization, the Give Center, a faculty member who can work with you on that kind of project. Right, and very quickly, if you could tell folks where they could go to get some more information or to be in contact with some of the folks involved in this. Right, I think the best source of information at this point would be either myself, uh, and it's easy to contact me at Stephen with a V, dot Jones at GCSU dot edu. Uh, or the co-coordinator of the Quality Enhancement Planning Task Force, and that's Julia Metzger, julia.metzger, M-E-T-Z-K-E-R, at gcsu.edu. And if, contact either one of us by email, and we'll get the information you want. Fantastic. Dr. Jones, thanks so much for coming in and explaining this process to us and giving us a little more information and something to look forward to. I think this is a very exciting time, not only here on campus, but also in our community. It is. All Great. right. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks so much. And that's it for this edition of GC Conversations. You can join us again next time.